And the last of the video for today is all about functions with struct. And there's a few things that we'll see, and you'll definitely get a lot of practice with writing functions with structs. Um, so we'll just introduce the basics of how this works. And um, you sort of already know the why of functions, and you also know uh, all the ways that functions can help your program, so you know that you'll get a lot of practice with writing these. But the main thing to remember is that um, a function parameter, when you call the function, makes a copy of the struct. Okay, so it's not like with arrays, it's more like with ints or doubles or something else, that when you call a function that has a normal struct parameter, um, the function gets a copy of that struct. So at the time of the function call, the whole thing gets copied into a new variable that the that function has, and then the, any changes that the functions would make to it don't get reflected back in main. So what that means is that, again, similar to ints and doubles, um, if you want the function to change it, what do you have to do? You have to pass uh, a pointer to the struct. And we'll probably spend more time with pointers to structs later on. Um, but so the main thing to remember with functions with structs is that it really works like functions with ints or doubles. It's, it's quite different than how things work with functions with arrays. So hopefully that makes them a little bit comfortable, more comfortable. Um, it can be dangerous because if your structs are really huge, then it might take a long time to copy them. It might be inefficient. But usually it makes it a little bit easier to work with structs. We don't have to um, be as nervous as we are when we work with arrays. And let's look at some examples. I changed our voting example from before uh, to go to a different district. This is the Texas second district, also known as one of the most gerrymandered districts in the country. Um, it's like a nice little ring around, I think, Houston. Um, whereas the, the Maryland third is like a little uh, spirally thing that kind of goes up from Annapolis and then cuts through Anne Arundel County and goes around some of Baltimore. So um, these are really fun things to look at if you want to understand how our um, congressional districts look as they're set by different uh, state legislatures. And in this one, turns out that in the 2020 election, the Republican won, uh, Crenshaw, uh, Lytton, the Democrat, did not win, and there were also two other candidates, a libertarian named Gunnels and an independent named Kubler. Um, and I kind of like that name, Kubler, but but apparently the people of Texas is uh, third district didn't like him that much. He only got 1,800 votes. So now let's think about some functions that we could write with these. And one of the functions that is a lot of times useful with structs is to just be able to like read and write the, the struct from the um, terminal, right? So we can't use printf as it is to print out a candidate because there's no, like you would say percent %s or percent, like what would you say? Printf doesn't know how to print a candidate because we made that type up. So if we want to print it, then we can make our own function like print candidate um, that would take a candidate canned. And then what would that look like if I want to define that function? Now I can just do things with that parameter just like it was any other um, variable. So I can just say like their name and their party affiliation and how many votes they got. So can.name, can.party, and can.votes. Of course, I don't have to print it like this. I can do anything I want, um, but now this will make it convenient if I just want to like print the results um, of this election, then I could just say print candidate for CD1 and do the same for all four of these. You should be hoping and wishing that soon we'll be able to have arrays of structs, and don't worry, we will. In fact, you can probably already figure out how we'll do it, but let's, um, let's just go with this for now. So let's see how this works. So we just wrote our first function with a struct, and uh, it wasn't too crazy. So we just put the type name as the struct name there, and then we use it with like the dot operator just like we would normally. Um, so if I 
compile this, then I need to make some different variable names. Let's see. Notice that I didn't bother in my code, I didn't bother checking the votes for candidate three and candidate four, sorry. All right, so those are the um, voting results and then yes, Crenshaw won.